Looking for an amp, but don't know how much money to spend? It's okay because there's awesome amps at every price level. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about my favorite amps at every price level up to a certain point because then I haven't really listened to many amps. If you are new here, please consider subscribing. We have over 700 videos, amps, DACs, turntables, headphones, just about everything for everyone. It really helps my channel because when you subscribe, I have a tendency to get more products in from the manufacturers, or at least when I ask, they generally will send them out. It also helps with sponsors to fund this channel. So thank you for watching and please subscribe. <laughs> First up on the list, we're going sub 100. Not only sub 100, sub 80. Not only sub 80, sub 70. $60, it's the Fozzy Audio TB10D. In pure transparency, I have been sponsored by Fozzy before. However, they sent me this and I hated it. So I told them it wasn't very good. Well, actually they didn't tell them, I told you. They reworked it and made a new one that, guess what? Sounds great. This is the reworked version. Comes with the Texas Instruments 3255 chipset, which is going to make more appearances on these more affordable amps because that is my favorite amp chipset. I think it sounds the most natural. This amp says it's 600 watts, just ignore that. With the stock power supply, you're probably getting 40 watts into eight ohms and you're probably getting around maybe 60 watts into four ohms. The good news is you can upgrade the power supply if you want to get more juice. There have been a ton of these sold. However, if you're going to buy one, get one through Amazon or where you have a return policy. Put it through its paces. Make sure that it's not going to poop out on you. This amp has no sources, so you'll need something to feed it, like a streamer, like a CD player, like a turntable with an integrated phono preamp or something like that. Anyway, $60 cannot be beat. If there is something that's less than $60 that you think sounds better than this and it's not used, please put it in the comments. Stepping up just a little bit from the TB10D is the Fozzy Audio BT20, I couldn't remember them, BT20A Pro. Uses the same Texas Instruments chipset. However, it also comes with Bluetooth. It comes with a little bit better parts in the form of caps. And it also comes with removable and swappable op amps. An op amp is basically a little thing that boosts the signal a little bit. And some people think that if you change them out to a higher end or a different op amp, you're gonna get cleaner sound. That has been my experience and that has been the experience of many of my patrons. So the BT20A is a great option. It's hundred dollars. Let's see what it's selling for right now. Well, out of stock on Amazon, which doesn't surprise me. It's got over 459 four and a half star reviews. So this is a great amp. However, since you can't get it right now, I'll link it in the description and usually this thing does go on sale a little bit. So normally it's around $90 instead of $100. So the IEMA A07 Pro comes with the same chipset and it has up to five swappable op amps. It has bass and tone controls and Bluetooth. So this is ticking a lot of boxes that the TB10D isn't ticking as far as swappable op amps and Bluetooth. $99.99, but it does have a $10 off coupon. $90, $30 more than the TB10D. You can swap out this power supply too and tone controls. So for 90 bucks, this is a great place to start. <laughs> Stepping up to $140, however, there's a 5% off coupon, so you get another $7, so about $132. You can get the Duke Audio ST01 Pro, which is an integrated amplifier. So this, I call an integrated amplifier anything that has a source built in. So technically speaking, the BT20A, the A07 Pro are integrated amplifiers because they have Bluetooth. However, I really think an integrated amplifier is one that has something like a DAC. And a DAC is a digital to analog converter. You can take signals from your TV, from your CD player, from a streamer, from a computer, and get better sound. So the ST01 Pro has a traditional DAC, which can take a full-size USB, full-size optical, full-size coaxial, can also output a subwoofer, 
and it comes in at $132 on sale. It's great sounding, doesn't have the 3255 amp chipset, but it does have another Texas Instruments chip, which sounds great, just can't handle as much power as the AO7 Pro, as the Fozzy Audio TB10D, as the Fozzy Audio BT20A. This is a great little amp. Couple iterate, this comes with a remote control and Bluetooth too. Couple iterations of this from Duke Audio and IEMA. I like this one from Duke Audio. There's one I like better though, and that is the IEMA T9 Pro. There's a T9 regular, which is good. T9 Pro is better. It's coming in at $170. And this is starting to push it for an amp like this. Now these both have the uh, Duke Audio and this one both have tubes. So you can get into tube rolling. That tube is just on the preamp section though. So it's not on the power amp section. These are all, all the amps I've talked about are class D amplifiers. Small, efficient, they're not gonna get super hot. This one comes with a remote too. A little bit more expensive though. I think it sounds great just to get started or a system in a new room. I think this is a great choice. Let's step it up a little bit though. <laughs> getting into a different topology now. So this is a traditional class AB amplifier. Class AB amplifiers are probably the amplifiers that you know the best, more traditional component size. However, this product is actually a little bit smaller. It's the Emotiva Basics A2M or mini stereo flux amplifier. It puts out 50 watts into eight ohms and 90 watts into four ohms and is class AB. It has a switching power supply and a little fan on the inside to spin it up. Because class AB amplifiers aren't as efficient as class D, but most people would probably say they sound a little bit more natural unless you get the perfect class D amplifier. This one's a pretty simple amp. It has a headphone on the front, which can be jumpered so you can get 50 watts or 25 watts, depending upon the impedance of the headphones. You can get a ton of power out of the front of this. But be careful because once you put that jumper in place, you can easily blow up your headphones. I would call this a headphone amp as a secondary. This is really a speaker amp and it's really straightforward. Similar to the Fozzy Audio TB10D, except this is class AB. So you're gonna need a source. However, I've used these vertically as long as I have a little bit of space on the side for ventilation and they don't take up hardly any space at all. Comes in at $279. This used to be a $350 amp. Emotiva is bringing down their prices a little bit on certain products. Absolutely outstanding value at under $300. Coming in at $350 is a very capable integrated amplifier. This has an integrated DAC. Also has an integrated phono stage, can drive up to two pairs of speakers, and it can drive those simultaneously depending upon the impedance of the speaker. Traditional style, this is the Yamaha AS301. I think it puts out 60 watts into eight ohms, 70 watts into four ohms. Yamaha is one of the few mainstream brands that continues to put out two channel integrated amplifiers at different price points. I think Onkyo maybe has another one, but I don't have any hands-on experience with that one. This one, the 301 is right down there. And it is kind of my de facto recommendation for an integrated amplifier around 350 bucks. It's really good, really, really good. And it's gonna take care of most things that you need. So you can put a streamer into there, a CD player, you can hook up a turntable, has a great remote control loudness, variable loudness control, which most, which nobody has except for Yamaha. So variable loudness control is really cool. And it kind of has a vintage vibe. I think you can get it in black and silver. Stepping it up a little bit more to $500, you have the Denon PMA 600NE. This product has been sold for a long time and that's always a good sign. It means that people are buying it and it's a good product. I had this in, I think it's great. I compared it to the TA1 from Emotiva. I ended up keeping the TA1, but if you don't need preamp outs, this is a great integrated amplifier. Makes 45 watts into eight ohms, 70 watts into four ohms, 
has a decent DAC, very natural sounding amplifier. So it's not thin, it's actually a warm tone. Phono input and a DAC, two optical, one coaxial for the DAC. And it has a subwoofer out, which is a pre-out, but it's a summed channel. So you're not gonna be able to hook an external power amplifier. Well, I guess you could, but it's only gonna play in mono. Great remote control too. So $500, I think this is a great product. They also have different products within this family that kind of go up as far as power. So if you need more power, you can look at the PMA, I think 800 NE, maybe 700 NE. Anyway, really, really good. Really, really good. I kind of miss it too, because it has a really distinctive look. Pretty cool. If you got an extra $100 to spend, I would tell you to buy the TA1 from Emotiva. It's another integrated amplifier, but this one, has quite a few more options. Puts out 60 watts into eight ohms and 100 watts into four ohms. Has a DAC, integrated DAC, but it also has a USB. So this is the first one outside of the really cheap ones, and this is class AB again, that you can bring in a USB input from your computer or other device. Also has a phono stage, and it has a moving magnet or moving coil phono preamp so you can switch it there on the back. This also has preamp outs. Not only does it have preamp outs, but it has a base management preamp out, which puts a high pass filter on your speakers. High pass filter is basically cutting the bass out of your main speakers at a certain level. They're still gonna make some bass. If you like it to listen to it loud and you have a subwoofer, then putting a high pass filter on your front speakers is a great way to be able to get more juice out of them without having them fall apart as quickly. Also has a FM tuner. When I visited the Emotiva factory and distribution center, their headquarters, more than one person told me that the TA1 is their favorite product because it's just so jammed packed with features and comes in at a reasonable price. $600 for all of this with that amount of power and a remote control, it's pretty spectacular. The TA1 from Emotiva I think is very compelling when you're looking at a new amp and you have $600 to spend. <laughs> Going up another $100 to $699 is a really cool and a really different integrated amplifier. This is the SVS Sound Bass Pro, which is the first amplifier that has an HDMI eARC, which means you can put this by your TV and run two channel music using your TV as a source. So think home theater in two channels. Since it's SVS, obviously it has a subwoofer out. It also has an integrated streamer in PlayFi. Now I have been critical of PlayFi in the past, but with the latest updates, PlayFi is at least usable. This also has a preamp output. So this can be used if you want to add more power. It makes 150 watts into four ohms, and this is a class D amplifier. However, if you want to add a class AB power amplifier later, you certainly can, and you can use the SVS SoundBase Pro as the preamp and the streamer and the DAC, because you also get an optical in, so no coaxial and no USB, but the eARC is kind of the differentiating factor. Also comes with a remote. This is a great unit and improved upon the already great sounding SVS sound base. $700, this is probably the most affordable way to get into an amplifier that has HDMI ARC from a traditional company. Coming in at $800 is going to be what I would consider probably an audiophile amplifier. I'm not saying any of these others aren't audiophile amplifier. I think some people would consider this to be kind of our first audiophile amplifier. It's the Rotel A11 Tribute, which I think is a brilliant and very clean sounding amplifier. It has a couple of different, what I call bass boosts and kind of loudness control. So if you're not getting enough bass, you can turn one of those on. This does have a phono stage but it doesn't have a DAC. So if you want a DAC, if you're gonna be doing digital music, you're gonna to have to get an external DAC or use the DAC in the device that you wanna to listen to. 50 watts into eight ohms. It will run four ohms, but that power is not given. That specification is not given. Usually, if it makes 50 watts into eight, it generally will make 75 or higher into four. Brilliantly finished amplifier. Great remote control, very pretty amplifier and clean, crystal clean. I really like this amplifier. 
It may not be enough power for some people though. Stepping all the way up to 2,500 euros. And I don't think we have a great exchange rate right now. So we're gonna be paying more than $2,500. This is nuts and I know, don't shoot the messenger. We talked about a whole bunch of affordable stuff. So don't tell me I'm not the cheap audio man. I do have this one in the house though. And it is a thing of beauty. It is built flawlessly. I mean, this thing is beautiful. It also has something that none of these other amps have, and that's room correction. So what you do is there's an app that goes on your phone. You'll pull that up. It'll run some test tones, and then it'll put some magic onto your speakers. Kind of cleans up the bass. This has a very capable DAC in it, which you get two opticals, one coaxial and one USB. Also has a Bluetooth. Only has one analog input, has two sub outputs. No phono stage. So this is more of a digital focused, but you can always just add a phono preamp to it because you have all those digital inputs. Really spectacular, really expensive. This is Class D, but it is the warmest sounding Class D and sounds warmer, which kind of means bass is going to, like vocals and mid-range are gonna sound a lot more full. It's a very warm amplifier and the warmest Class D amplifier I've heard. Beautiful remote control too. So this prices itself out of reach of most people and I get it, but I, I needed to talk about it because it's built so well and it has room correction. There are a lot of amplifiers I'm sure I've missed. If you think I've missed something, pop it down in the comments to help other people depending upon what their budget is. Really appreciate you watching. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Discord, Patreon only Facebook group. You can also use the links in the description. Most of those will be affiliate links. Not all of them though, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Tidal, Amazon Music, or Rune. Links in the description. Click sign up. They have a trial period, even if you quit though, I get a couple of bucks. You can buy me a cup of coffee. Down at the bottom of the video, there's a thanks button. Give me a couple of bucks, but don't feel compelled to give me anything. You can also buy, oh, it's not one of my coffee marks. You can also buy some merch from me. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen maybe through one of your new awesome amps that you can afford because we talked about one at every price point or some. And fill yourself with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.